Scott Skoll. Okay. Yeah. Kas sina te tavas on nad siis? Ma arvan, et ma ikka on kõige pealt. Ma ütlen, et mina olen Ants ja olen moderaator ja Tšeer on Jaanus ja Jaanus saab tavasõna. Ja ütlen veel neile selle live broadcastiga ära tahes, et see oli ikkagi protestima. Kes? Ma ei tea, see pärast eelika käest küsima. Aha, et ei ole live broadcast ju? See rülistatakse välja kõige. Ah, soo? Tule pain tiki mõistega rääkida. Pärast võime neid jagada, et see ole saali vaja eriti see diskassin. Ainult, et nüüd see diskassin on nii, et palume Svenni ja siia jääda. Tervus. Tere, jõus on edu ja olge siis kõvad mehed ja... Ma olen seal tagareas vaatama, et see kõda kuulen ja kuulen. Muidu meil panime, et sina saaks siin olla, aga kui sa tahad vahepeal käia, et see uks on mul ja villu. Ei ära reserveerida, aga nüüd kui jäävad tühjaks. Sa vaatasid üle ja kõik oli okei. Minu meelest oli, ma tegin seal korvi.
Nakon biti, ja. To je tako. To je to cvjetu. Tere Gojgile, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I am the moderator of our seminar, and may I introduce to you the chairman, rector of our academy, Mr. Janus Jakimenko. Töö keeleks on meil inglise keel, kuna tegemist on rahvusvahelise lennundusseminaariga samal ajal Me võime vabalt kasutada ema keelt, eriti kui on tegemist küsimuste või diskussioonidega. Ma arvan, et me saame üksteisest aru ja kui vaja saame tõlgitud. So our working language is the English language, but if it's necessary, then we can use Estonian as well and we will provide a short translation. But the presentations will be in English. To inform every presenter, there is a live broadcast going on in YouTube. If there are objections, then please tell us, and we'll organize that your presentation is not broadcast. Uh, that's possible. And now, uh, may I give the floor to Rector of the Academy, Janus Jakimenko, for the opening address. Pardon. So, uh, ladies and uh, gentlemen, dear guests, I am glad to welcome you here in our 20th Estonian Aviation Seminar. I will start with, uh, with a brief... with a brief history about our Estonian Aviation Seminars. So, some of you know that the uh, tradition started uh, 20 years ago, but uh, now I will show you what actually happened uh, 20 years ago and give you some information why this seminar is so important to us, so important to all Estonian aviation organizations. But uh, at first I would like to say there was one event before the uh, so-called national aviation seminar tradition was started. There was a first Estonian aviation managers meeting, which was held 1993 here in southern Estonia in a town called Elva. And uh, it was also published in a local newspaper that all the airport managers gathered to have a meeting about the Estonian aviation traditions, about the Estonian aviation problems and projects. But the first national aviation seminar, which was arranged by us, by the Tartu Aviation College, now Estonian Aviation Academy, was held 1995 in Pärnu. There were 34 than these, and uh, most of the Estonian aviation governmental organizations were represented. We can say that there was a Ministry of Education, Ministry of Defendence, Estonian Air, those times border guard aviation groups, all national airports. And this is the picture of the building a bit historic to show that uh, this is also a historic event, 20 years of the aviation seminar. And this is the program which was uh, in this first seminar, so we can see that these uh, problems or these uh, subjects are actually quite actual nowadays as well. And uh, we see that human factors in Estonian aviation always actual uh, development trends of aviation industry, development trends of aviation education, and presentations of different aviation organizations. We can see that even today the agenda 
is pretty much similar, but nowadays we have more international delegates, international speakers. What is different is that uh, those days after the uh, presentation, there was a meeting and some decisions were made. And here is a list of those decisions which were made during this first aviation seminar. The first one to develop the national aviation culture, including aviation training. And that internationally recognizable standards shall be implemented in aviation training. We see that nowadays it is very important that those people who were there in this first aviation seminar, they made this decision to go on with international standards. And the second decision was to conduct national aviation personnel demand survey and based on that results, there should be a financing system for the Estonian aviation education established. We see that if we wouldn't have such uh, decisions uh, those days, then probably we wouldn't be here as well. And already those days, uh, the Estonian Tartu Aviation College, uh, there was a uh, approved training system which was developed by Tartu Aviation College and the all the members of the national aviation organizations, they decided that this is the approved system, this is the way we go with the national aviation training. And before I go on with the fourth decision, I would like to say that there is one September 25 years uh, ago, the pilot training started in no high school. So this is also very important anniversary for us, for Estonians and for the aviation education. But uh, 1995, there was a decision that uh, there is a need for higher level pilot training, at, that the pilot training will be transferred from the No High School to Tartu Aviation College. And the fifth, there was a decision to support Tartu Aviation College, Ülenurme Study Center development idea. Actually, it was not this building, but this was the idea to develop the aviation training in the airport building. But later, it was clear that the airport facilities are not uh, big enough for this kind of training. And we see that we have developed further. And during years 1996 and 2010, there was a decision that the National Aviation Seminar will be held at Pühajärve Hotel Resort. And uh, it became a transition. At first, all the presentation, all the speeches, but the second, which is also very important, is the social event after the seminar where all the organization can discuss their problems, they can discuss their development trends and new ideas in a very good environment. And from 2011, we are here in this new building. We can see that we have used the new technology available to make this photo. And uh, this is the building where we are now. And since 2011, we have held this Estonian aviation seminar here. So I hope you all enjoy your stay here in the Aviation Academy. And, and hope you like these presentations and speeches. And I uh, hope you like the uh, discussions during coffee break and uh, later as well. So please enjoy, enjoy your stay here. and. If you have any questions, then our staff will help you with this. Thank you. Thank you, Janos. Will you sit here next to me? And our 
next speaker, one of our keynote speakers, will be Sven Guckemelk. Uh, Sven serves as a consultant for Lufthansa Consulting in the areas of network management, route planning, schedule optimization, airport strategic development, with focus on airport marketing. Uh, his experience includes such companies as Air Baltic, Estonian Air, Tallinn Airport, and his projects in Lufthansa Consulting have taken him to Japan, Saudi Arabia, Russia, Georgia, and the Baltics. Uh, last but not least, uh, Sven is gra a graduate from Estonian Aviation Academy and he has earned his master's degree at Vilnius Gediminas Technological University. Uh, at the moment, he is a doctoral student in Tallinn University of Technology. And Sven is also our lecturer. Sven, the floor is yours. Hello, am I on? Okay, perfect. Uh, hello to all of you, director, distinguished guests. I'm uh, happy to be here for the second time on behalf of the uh, world's biggest airline group, Lufthansa. Uh, we send cre uh, warm greetings to all of the steering innovation sector on behalf of our 115,000 employees all over the world. And uh, we're present as said already last year, in all countries except for North Korea and Afghanistan. And I don't see the, any developments there anytime soon. Uh, as, uh, before I start with my presentation, it's, it's uh, probably very clear that uh, there is quite a turmoil in Estonian aviation for the time being, especially in light of the news which came last week and probably affected the number of international guests arriving here with Estonian air flights. And <clears throat> it, it's a major struggle, which, which is a, like a stepping stone for a country, how to overcome the loss of an incumbent uh, national carrier, such as Estonian Air. And I tried also to bring that message into the, today's presentation, and I think that this is a good, valid place where to start a discussion on the topic. So, um, no, this way. So, in order to know what's happening in the future, we always need to look into the past to know what has happened historically. So what has been in the past 20 years? Here, uh, it's a very mixed graph of Tallinn Airport passenger statistics from 1996 to 2015. And 2015 is just 10 month results. What we see on the graph is that Tallinn Airport has grown roughly 11% uh, on average per year from 96 to 2015. And every year there has been a, a, a slide in the passenger numbers. Whenever there has been a recession, when we're looking at the years 99, 2000, 2001, when we're looking years 2009, 2010, then look up there, there is a light blue line. That's a still near passenger share. When times are good, then everyone wants to come. Everyone will fly. Everyone will come into the market to serve the market. When times are bad, there is only one airline which you can rely on. That's the one which you control, which doesn't have the chance to avoid or run away from these services. And for the uh, Estonian market, it has been Estonian. It has always taken care of the local market. It always has taken care of the downturns to provide some certain levels of stability in times of turmoil. The same uh, is for the regional airports. This is a statistics from 2005 to 2015 for all Estonian regional airports. What we can see is that there was a clear peak from 2009 to 2012. 
and then again reduction, whereas, which is, I would say, illogical. We had one of the hardest recessions in 2009, where the GDP grew significantly, unemployment fell to 18%, and we're having a peak in domestic regional aviation. The only thing which coincides with that finding is the fact that Estonia at that time took up 330 aircrafts. It was the current existing carrier who took care of the market. As long as they operated, the market was growing. When they stepped down, when they gave away the sub-340 type regional aircrafts, market again went down. And today, the regional airport's market size is at the level of 2006 and 2007. As simple as that it is. It's clear that there is a clear distinction between having an incumbent existing national carrier and its contribution to the country's economy and the vision sector. We can see the same thing <coughs> sorry, in the eyes of Riga Airport. The growth in Riga Airport only happened during the times when Air Baltic was growing. When Air Baltic is now not growing, the passenger numbers in Riga are going down. So having said, uh, having said that, yes, there is a, it's a matter of discussion to decide to, for the public in general, is there a need to have a national carrier? But what we can say from the examples is that there are clearly positively identified trends. The question is now, what is the importance of that? I mean, this is just a graph, this is just a number, but why? We can see this is a slide which uh, highlights what is the profit margins in the sectors. Manufacturers who create the aircrafts get a 16% uh, return on their investment. Aircraft uh, lessers, usually 15%. Ground handling companies, around 10%. Catering, again, around 10%. Airports, around 10%. Computer reservation systems, around 30 Airlines, 2.6%. This is the least profitable area. So, based on this slide, it's very easy. Let's not have an airline. Why do we need a, to invest in the area which provides the least profit? Let's invest on all of the other sectors. However, this is the answer. Airline is the center of catalytic effects. It's, it's a snowball effect which just keeps on growing bigger and bigger. Airline is the one who provides directly job for the staff uh, that it, uh, is flying there. However, additionally, we need to bear in mind maintenance providers. We have airport, IT, ground handling, catering, all of these. Additionally, creating additional demand in terms of tourists brought into the region, in terms of <coughs> hotels being filled with tourists. And all of that can add up to 3% of a GDP. 3% of a country like Estonia, GDP. Well, that uh, aviation as such. So it's the matter of question, how do we fill that void? If there is no Estonian air, if there is no national carrier, then do we want to give up on this 3%? Which is fine, but it has to be educated decision, not made on someone's uh, hasty decision that we don't need that, that's a cost. It's also a cost of not having an airline. And that's something that has to be taken into account. There, uh, for example, air traffic effect on GDP. In Estonia, it has been calculated, it can be even slightly above in a total impact over 3%. In Kazakhstan, 3%. In Latvia, 2%. What I can say about, as a comment on the Latvian GDP uh, effect, is that the uh, people who conducted the study said that Latvian economy at that time, that was 2012, was not very transparent and it was difficult to get tangible and trustworthy numbers and they believe it would be higher. However, there is a significant shadow management in the, in the business sector which in the end shows that if the air traffic has an effect of 3% to the GDP, is it something we want to give up? And for example, when we're looking at the Global Trade Enabling Report, in terms of Lithuania, they are the highest in the, uh, uh, in the transportation sector, 59th position. Latvia in the 73rd, Estonia in 78th position. What's dragging Estonia down? is that when we're looking at available international airline seat kilometers per week, we are 114th in the world. There were nice African countries like Mozambique, which were much higher than Estonia. 
And if we're now talking that we are very fine giving up on Estonian air, then I believe that in the next global trade enabling report, we're going to see ourselves in the 130th position. And there is no bottom. I mean, it's 211 sovereign states, so 211 is the ultimate goal. That's an open question. And uh, one, one more topic which I want to address. This is a graph of the very, it's always brought here in Estonia, example of Vilnius, that what happened in Vilnius, that Flylal went bankrupt, everything is good. I'm coming back to the same point which I raised in the beginning. You can see that there is a light gray color. I admit that the colors are not the most convenient here, but there is a light gray color which uh, afterwards there is written small planet airlines. This is the fly lull which disappeared. And you can see that when times get tough, no one steps in. And for example, in the case of Air Baltic, who pushed out fly lull in the Lithuanian market, then as soon as they were out, Air Baltic reduced their services as well. It's a clear distinction that, uh, and I'm not saying that Air Baltic did wrongly or badly. It was their business. It's a very wise business decision. You want to get rid of your competitors and you want to uh, serve the market via Riga. This is their business strategy and this is what they're doing very well. The question is just that that market is at the moment taken over by Ryanair and Wizzair. I was in beginning of September, I was in Ukraine, in Kiev on an IRA conference. And the director of Kharkov Airport said that the Wizz Air is the world's most efficient airline. They were able to announce in two weeks that they will take down three aircrafts from Kharkov and close the base. That's how long it takes for them. The chances that it will take more in Vilnius are quite low. Low costs are very efficient to act to whatever happens on the market. If you can't affect that, then you don't have any leverage as a country. Or market shares. The same, same slide representing again the same thing. As soon as Flyla left, Air Baltic reduced. They only fought there until they were in. Okay, but what's, what's looking forward for the next 20 years to come? I, I looked at uh, three scenarios for Tallinn Airport statistics. Conservative, or let's say pessimistic, then base scenario, and optimistic scenario. In the case for the base scenario, looking in the last seven years, the average growth has been 7%. That will leave us to, uh, in 2035 with 4.6 million passengers in Tallinn Airport, which is, I, I believe, quite acceptable for the government, which would be acceptable for pretty much any stakeholder. It's, it's a reasonable amount. For the optimistic scenario, I looked at last 20 years. Since in the 1996 to <laughs> and the early years of European Union enlargement, the average growth rate was 36 and 40 percent. That drives it up to 11 percent average or 10 point something. That would leave us, if we can <laughs> have for the next 20 years the same growth rate, that would leave us with 15 million passengers, making us <laughs> the second Helsinki, which is again doable. Qatar Airways was able to create in the middle of desert in Doha from 800,000 to an airport of 15 million with the same population number as Estonia has. Not impossible, but very difficult to achieve. And in the case of pessimistic scenario, where the growth will be 2%, which is average of last three years in Tallinn Airport, without taking out this year, we are going to be in 3.1 million passengers in 2035. And the question is, is that number acceptable for us? Are we happy with that? Is that enough? What will determine which path will follow for the Estonia for the next 20 years? The will of the people and the decision makers. You decide. You decide with whom you fly. You decide if the Nordic Aviation Group will be success or failure. At the moment, there are a lot of talks that it should be a failure. I'm not saying that it should be success or it should be failure. That decision is up to you. That's up to the discussion to decide if there is a need for that. But in order to make that decision, everyone should be uh, knowledgeable about making it. Because at the, moment it, uh, at the moment from the discussion, it seems that the discussion is not focused on the people who know about aviation, but people who don't know. And uh, they are taking a lot of charge in, in uh, running this process. For example, one of the things, what is the ministerial plans for the PSO services? 
At the moment, we are with Lufthansa Consulting advising the state on what's going to happen with the public service obligations to, to islands. Will there be a follow-up? Will there be increase in the services? Or do we decide that there is no need for that? What will happen with the competitive situation and the strategic uh, uh, part? There is also government can take, uh, take role what will happen competitively. There are levers in the government. What is the ability to increase inbound tourism? Because so far, Estonian state has taken a very strong uh, initiative that it's the port that uh, is responsible for tourists. Because this is where we have been getting a lot of tourists into Estonia. Is it the wrong decision? No, I don't think so. It's been a very wise decision. The question is that this is, again, one of the levers that state can support by creating additional demand. And again, state priorities for long-term development of the aviation sector. Services versus production. There could be a decision that the Estonian state decides that we don't need airline, that we instead we want to focus on providing maintenance organizations. We want to provide IT solutions. We want to have a world-leading ground handling company. We want to have something in that field. It doesn't have to be. Is it maritime versus aviation? How do we want to set up the ground transportation? If it's on the rail, then most likely we'll not be able to feed into Tallinn Airport or other airports. If it's road network, maybe we can find a way how to connect to the airports. These are all decisions which have to be made by the key decision makers. But in order to make these decisions, they have to be informed. And at the same moment, I'm not very confident that everyone who's making the decisions, or, or let's put it this way, the people who are making decisions are fairly fairly well uh, aware of the situation, but the people influencing them, especially the media, have not shown too much uh, knowledge in the matter. And this is, this is what's going to matter in the end. As I understand that we, are, uh, we want to leave majority of the time into the discussion, I'm going to rest here. Uh, I'm always uh, available for contact. I said, I'm not here to say what's right or wrong. That is decided uh, anyway by the people. The question is here that do we know what are the decisions based on? And I, can't, I can honestly say, being one, working for the world's leading expert on aviation uh, strategy, I don't know 100% on what, uh, what's behind there. But someone should. Someone should actually look into it in more detail. We advised the uh, Nordic Aviation Group on the business plan, but uh, on the state aviation strategy, we haven't done anything. So that's, uh, that's up to the state. Thank you for your time. Sven, uh, for your interesting and, I might say, provocative presentation. And now, uh, Sven, may I ask you to remain here? Yes. Yeah, it's Absolutely. all right. Absolutely. Um, for obvious reasons, uh, one of our keynote speakers is not here. He cancelled his presentation. And instead, we have planned a discussion on the turmoil situation that Sven mentioned. Um, that's the situation of Estonian aviation in general. And although uh, the questions are concentrated on an airline, uh, we saw it very clearly from Sven's uh, presentation that an airline's fate might be might have much uh, broader meaning. Uh, so, uh, Mr. Alan Nomik, our lecturer of aviation enterprise management, may I ask you to come here as well. Uh, can I have the questions? Uh, if not, then I must think. No. No. Yeah, that is uh, the last slide. Yeah, can you show the last, last slide? Yeah, that's it. So, uh, everybody can see, or should I read out the uh, questions? How to ensure a new airline's success? What are the roles of different stakeholders in supporting an airline's reliability? Stakeholders, government, national authority, airports, aviation community, school, that is a uh, training institution in aviation management, uh, customers, media, business community, or what else? And 
the last question, again, very provocative, maybe 10 years ago. It would have been criminal to ask such a question, but now it's the situation. Do we need our own national carrier? Uh, there, are, there is more than half an hour for that. I hope uh, it will be a lively discussion. Eesti keel on täielikult aktsepteeritud. Me ei jõua küll kõike telkida, kui vaja siis lööme kaasa. Kas ma annaksin kõigepealt mikrofoni Jaanusele? Thank you and I will start with the first question. How to ensure a new airline success? So, uh, uh, can we ask a question? Was a decision to uh, start a new company on a such a short time and with such uh, conditions, was it a wise decision and, uh, and uh, how, how it uh, will go on? Thank you. Well, if it's hanging up in the air, then uh, I would say that most likely the decision was to set up the company immediately or not at all. Because if you set it up one or two years later, it's already become so complicated. The market has somehow tried to cope, and uh, then you can only enter during the next recession, which is uh, during the recession, most likely government is not going to be able to allocate free funding for that. So the question, I think, mostly is that... Uh, I mean, the timing is, is not, not in dispute. It had to be now or never, basically, or during the next recession, when the market is again a downfall and we, we find out that the market has collapsed 25 or 30 percent. Okay, I will give a word to Allan. Allan, as our lecturer, what do you think about the new company and, uh, and that uh, it was established with such a short time and uh, and the uh, decision, how it is working, how it is recruiting, uh, what kind of other airline services it is using. What do you think about it? Uh, uh, thank you for the invitation. Uh, um, thank you for the question as well. Of course, uh, uh, if you speak about uh, ensuring of new uh, airline success, uh, it's like a game. For example, if you're playing the chess and uh, you do a wrong step or not do a right, a right step in the uh, right time, you are losing the game. And uh, if you speak about the uh, Estonian air, uh, very often if we heard something about Air Baltic, it's a story of, uh, of, of, of success. I think that the story of Estonian air is a story of uh, unused opportunities my personal opinion. And uh, 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 what we see for today, uh, maybe it's related uh, with uh, Sven's uh, presentation, of course, uh, in the while, uh, uh, for today, the European Bank push money to the investments with negative interest. And we speak about the uh, business environment, uh, it's impossible to collect some investments without, without, without good, uh, good uh, air connections, firstly. But we will speak about this uh, personal policy. Uh, it's, it's difficult to comment it uh, because it, uh, every day we receive new news and uh, uh, this is the point. Okay, does anyone here have any comments about the first uh, topic, how to ensure a new airline success. So in our case, this means the new company which was established. Uh, do you have any comments or any questions or any ideas what we would, what we can discuss here? Yeah, there is a lot of discussion going on in social networks, but maybe, maybe somebody wants to let his or her voice be heard here. Estonians are very shy people. It's difficult to, to come uh, raise the hand and ask a question, but uh, please feel free. I mean, I think the, this, is, this is the key to finding a solution, is to, to having a discussion. I think there we have a question. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Petri Lohivori, 
who knows Estonian aviation maybe better than most of us. <laughs> Thank you. Now, Petri Lohivori, yes. No, I don't know your aviation very well, but I'd like to provoke the question. I think it's true that uh, if you have a glass of water and you put your finger in the water and you pull it out, is there a hole left in the water? I think this is the case with Estonian air also. If there is a market, it will be automatically filled in very quickly if there is a market. But if there is no market, nobody will come here. So it's, uh, it's all a matter of the profits available for the airlines. Can they make money out of Tallinn? And uh, the other option is, of course, that it's sub subsidized by some means so that they can make continuous losses to provide transport into Estonia, which is, of course, for the tourist industry, for the business, that can be very important to have direct access into Tallinn. But uh, it's all a question of money and profits available. And I think we have to be very realistic about this. I think it's, it's a fair question. The only comment I can give is that I know in Europe at the moment uh, less than 10 airlines which are profitable. And bearing in mind our northern neighbor Finnair last year when it was profitable was 2008, seven, something like that this year. They had a very good third quarter, but uh, I still have doubts that they might not be able to pull a profitable result end of the year. At the moment, the question is that everyone's losing money, but if we're having a young, small state uh, with the lowest cash pockets, then we can't actually proceed into it. The, the main question is yes, of course. Uh, is airline business going to uh, make huge profits for the state? No, I don't think it will never be the case. The question is that uh, market, I agree, will not, uh, market will not fill in the void, uh, or market will, should fill in the void, but at the same time, uh, in case of Lithuania, uh, there was a clear distinction after the fly -lull bankruptcy, the foreign direct investments from Sweden and Norway significantly dropped. Why? SS did come in, but uh, if you want to arrive from Copenhagen to Vilnius, the last flight arrives 20 minutes after one. In Tallinn, it's 23.10. The first flight in the morning, I've uh, flown quite extensively recently in Lithuania, the first flight to Stockholm leaves 6.05 in the morning, meaning that you will be 6.30 in uh, Stockholm. So, and your banking meeting starts at 10. At a certain moment, as an investor, you will think that, do I need to have my factory there, where it's so difficult to address, where I'm always coming back tired, half, uh, half a day uh, spent on not sleeping and sitting somewhere in the airport? Or do I want to actually move my factory to somewhere which is much better accessible? And this is, this is the kind of answers which actually need to go into the discussion. The market, I mean, this, uh, this uh, market question is something which was very relevant 20 years ago. Nowadays, uh, if, you had to, if someone had told 20 years ago that market from Amsterdam to Barcelona can be 3 million passengers a year, you would, you would have laughed at it. Nowadays, with Transavia, EasyJet, Ryanair opening the market, the market is there where it's opened, where there are connections. Uh, but uh, Sven, still, uh, do you agree with this uh, hole in the water theory? I think that, I mean, this is, uh, this is what's coming out also from, uh, from current, that SAS is stepping in. Their, their uh, market to, towards Scandinavia is being filled. Uh, agreeing to the hole of the water theory to a certain extent, yes, I must agree that if it's very developed, if it's inside the Europe, then most likely it will be filled. In, uh, in areas where the profitability is very low, we're talking about profit margin at best of 1% or 1.5%, it doesn't interest big carriers in Europe to, to uh, look for such a low profitability opportunities and rather they will focus on somewhere else. And then, in the end, we will see uh, what has happened previously also in the Italian market, that we have carriers who come in and very quickly go out. KLM, uh, Royal Dutch Airlines, stopped flying to Tallinn after 95% load factor because they understood that it wasn't a, a success story for them in terms of strategic uh, assets. Their cost base was very high. They weren't able to charge higher. They filled the aircraft, and that, as easy as that it is. But, uh, I mean, nothing in aviation is easy. Uh, it's, uh, Thank uh, you. Uh, some words, uh, 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 words from me. At, uh, we speak about this today's situation, today's timetable of uh, uh, other airlines. It's not a constant. Uh, market is growing uh, 
and uh, the first, first of, first of all, is that our opportunities. But uh, up to the airline strategies, uh, please remember there's uh, KLM flights to Tallinn uh, 12 times uh, per week, it's been uh, five or six years ago, and then they just decided that no flights enough, not that uh, that are uh, thinking about some uh, correcting of of, of, of of occurrences. No, no flights. And then, uh, firstly, our Minister of Transport wanted to uh, speak with them. No, it's a so little person. Then uh, Premier Minister sent uh, some, uh, some some letter. Uh, please, uh, maybe we are discussing some. You at your 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 flying to Tallinn as well. No, we just decided. It's uh, it, it's a, it, it's a point, and. Uh, it's 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 a it's 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 a real situation, and and uh, yes, we have to accept it. Okay, thank you, Arlan. But if we go on with the question and see that how to ensure a new airline success, so uh, uh, are there any suggestions what we can make? So let's say that uh, we are we Estonians are very famous to whine about our national things. If we fly with Finnair, if we fly with Lufthansa or any other airline, then we like it. But if we fly with our national carrier, and if the T is not uh, the one we like, then we start writing about it in a newspaper. Or uh, if there is a very short delay, then we start whining. So how can we ensure that Estonian people are more positive about our Estonian aviation businesses? Well, first what I can say is that I think that all of you should fly Lufthansa, it's a very good airline. <laughs> 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 Secondly, what I can say is that, uh, very, very easy case, uh, this Monday there was a news article in, uh, in the biggest uh, newspaper, Postimes, saying that Nordic Aviation Group flights uh, are late, uh, uh, are constantly late. Delays were between 15 to 30 minutes. And I was surprised that that made, into, that made into the news, but it didn't make into the news that my mother company, Lufthansa, because of the strike, cancelled two flights. And this is something which actually surprises me very much, that how is it so that we are so keen on killing our own, whereas we are so blind towards whatever is elsewhere. And that's also one of those things that... Uh, uh, I understand media's, media's role. Media's role is to actually check and media's role is to, to make amends. But if it goes frenzy then, and out of control, then based on that, people had, uh, had inputs and, and get ideas that, yeah, I can't trust them. They, they are always late. They will never fly. I can't go on them. And based on that, they will not fly. And then there is no airline success story. So it's also about controlled thinking. And uh, whenever me media's role is to bring out whatever they see, but maybe then there is a role of either aviation academy or some aviation experts to also write something about it that it's normal. Because if I'm beaten and I'm saying that I, I shouldn't be beaten, then you don't believe me. But if someone else says that it doesn't, uh, that it's un uh, unwilling or it's bad, then it's more trustworthy. Then it's more believable. Yeah, but uh, you blame everything, including the Estonian air crash, on Estonian national idiosyncrasies. No, 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 no. Ab absolutely not. There were a lo lot of things which, which led to this situation where Estonian state at the moment is. There are a lot of uh, mistakes done in the management. There are a lot of things that are done on, uh, on different levels. But <clears throat> that kind of mistakes are done everywhere. You can't find a single company where there hasn't been a single mistake. Mistakes happen, it's human. I mean, th this is part of our business world. But uh, there are different causes which, which led to a situation, but, and I'm probably not the best one to, to at the moment look into what, what were these exact causes, because I think that media is doing a hell of a job there. However, I think that uh, what we need to think about is actually the right question here, how to ensure new airline success story. Yes. And, and that is something that we need to think that if we see in the media, I mean, here yes. the people here in this room most likely are aware, very well aware of the, what's happening in the aviation, that if you have a bit stronger, if the wind changes, then you are five minutes late, and there is nothing bad because that's why connecting times in airports is 40 minutes, not five minutes. And also to give out that comment, 
but uh, as Estonians, uh, we have the same feeling as I have at the moment in this auditorium. We're discussing one of the greatest uh, grave issues, and the only question which came from the auditorium was from a Finnish guy. Yeah, and, um, thank you. Uh, I think that this first question, how to ensure near airline success, this is more for politicians. They may talk long this. But uh, maybe one easy question. Uh, Sven, tell us uh, from your expertise, uh, what do you think, how many years it may take to get running this uh, NAC new airline, uh, starting with uh, some 40 or lit bit more millions and uh, real uh, real estimate we we advised their business plan uh, we found it actually very conservative and uh, i would just like to make one correction to what the minister said minister said that lufthansa advised no it was lufthansa consulting still lufthansa doesn't advise anyone it was lufthansa consulting who advised the nordic aviation group on their business plan we were happy to find it ultra conservative and we believe that <coughs> if the assumptions don't change if the market always evolves, but uh, it was done actually on a quite realistic uh, conditions. And if these conditions are met, then in five years' time, uh, they are able to come to a black zero. Black zero meaning that they're not going to burn money. It's never going to be a huge profit center for the state. That's unrealistic. But to be at black zero is, is realistic. Ah, uh, yes, I'll give you the microphone. Hi Sven. Uh, hi, my name is Arti Albert, uh, representing Pakaravio from the next building. That actually, my question is about this advising. That uh, uh, was Lufthansa Consulting uh, invited uh, to Estonian government to uh, give wise advice uh, regarding to get this yes or no. We don't know what they expected, but we know that they got the no from the European Commission. Uh, were you personally or the Lufthansa Consulting advising Estonian government as well? Thank you. Uh, as uh, uh, Lufthansa Consulting was advising Estonian uh, prior to Teradaskila strategy, when Teradaskila came, he brought in his own consultancies from other consult companies. I'm not allowed to discuss which were they because that would be bad mouth in competition. However, uh, <laughs> From the moment that uh, during the terror strategy and after the terror st uh, strategy left and the res uh, restructuring began, it was decided that the restructuring will be done by another consultancy company and we only afterwards validated the restructuring plan for the state. We did not advise the state on the, uh, on the, ED, uh, on the European Commission uh, aid. What we did was we advised the state on this time that uh, how to avoid Again, getting into, into the same problem of getting uh, negative state aid rules. We believe that the business plan is, is valid and we, are, uh, we did not compose a business plan, but we just advised them on the business plan. Yeah, uh, but uh, personally, what do you think that if you uh, would advise, uh, could it be the answer from Commission get yes as well, or it was just a pure no and then it, it was clear already before the decision was made? Because if, if we know, the, for example, SAS has been uh, what <laughs> supported by the government many, many years by billions of, billions of dollars. Thank you. Uh, I personally believe that uh, some mistakes were made in the, in the process. Uh, some were bigger, some were smaller. Uh, I cannot say 100% that if we had advice that we would have been able to get away clear, but uh, we would have suggested a different strategy with uh, communication to European Commission. However, as I said, uh, it's, it's uh, water under the bridge. It's, uh, it doesn't matter, the decision is now this and we should try to, try to move on and we should try to avoid getting up back into the same trap. All right, now we have covered already the second question partly as well, uh, but still about different stakeholders in supporting an airline's reliability. Uh, can we have some direct opinions? Because Sven expressed a lot of things already and also 
in other comments we, it was heard, but uh, especially about government, uh, do we consider the national authority as just um, part of the government or national authority people? Do you see that you have a special role in this in this process? Or any any anybody else, of course. Yeah. Daniel Rautic. Thank you. I just want wanted comment Sven's statement about uh, uh, airbolting leaving Lithuania that uh, we really don't know would it have been happened if Lithuanian state would have not shoot Herr Baltic in this stage and said that they will confiscate all their assets in, in Lithuania, so to say. So it is maybe not a very clear example in this regard. No, no, I, I agree. Uh, the only thing which, which I, I actually expressed is that uh, Air Baltic uh, created in 2009 a strategy where they said that we want to feed everything and everyone via Riga, so we'll close anything, no matter what. They also closed the base in Tallinn, even though Tallinn Airport did not confiscate or Estonian government did not sue Air Baltic. So the bases were closed from, from everywhere, whereas, I mean, based on the market condition, uh, the market terms for them in Lithuania actually got much better. And uh, no one said that the, your air operator certificate has been stopped or that you're not allowed to sell flights because they did continue flying from between Vilnius and Riga. If they had completely stepped out of the uh, Lithuanian market, that would have been a fair assumption. But since they continued flying six times daily between Vilnius and Riga, it clearly showed that they had interest in the Lithuanian market. They continued flying. They didn't see obstacles in flying there. And flying from Vilnius to Riga or flying from Vilnius to Copenhagen I mean, inside the European uh, single sky, there is no difference in that. As said, it's a business strategic decision. If I had been in the Air Baltic, I would have also advised them to concentrate on the, on the Latvian business. The, uh, con concentrating on one hub is always makes sense. It's most efficient. However, does, it make, uh, does that support Lithuanian economy? No, that doesn't really support Lithuanian economy. Yeah, but there was the case that they were building up a base in, in Lithuania and and they were forced to put it together. But uh, in this regard, I, want, I wanted to ask that um, there was also discussion that the Air Baltic made some sort of proposal to our government, and, and I think maybe you had uh, Our fingers were not in, involved with that. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I cannot, I cannot uh, disclose, or I, I have no information based on that, at least from official sources. OK, thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, but uh, we speak about the uh, Air Baltic and, uh, and aviation business. Of course, we have to separate uh, public relations, some uh, marketing strategies, and real life, for example. Uh, four years ago, uh, we had uh, some example with uh, opening of four or five new roads from Tallinn to the uh, 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 airports in Finland by Flybe Airline. Uh, but only for the three or four months, and and that's all. And that's all. And uh, firstly, I will speak about Air Baltic. At uh, five years ago, the uh, same person in the public relation of this airline uh, said uh, uh, that the uh, Air Baltic business model was a very profitable, and they are going to save Estonian passengers. And uh, one year later, the uh, Latvian government thought about how to save Air Baltic. And uh, <laughs> what is uh, a real situation? Uh, what is uh, uh, what is a uh, real business plan? Uh, is Air Baltic wanted to go to the, have to go to the uh, Estonian market uh, uh, to, for finding uh, some strategic investor or some other reasons. What is this uh, public relation? What is real uh, business plan? Who knows? I would only advise uh, everyone in the Stone Innovation not to concentrate so much on what others are doing, that yeah. what, what is happening in Air Baltic, what is happening elsewhere, because uh, you can never really, really, you can't control what others are going to do. This is your external factors. Yeah. 
try to compensate uh, the activities on the external factors with uh, building up your own strengthnesses. Look for your own opportunities. Because <coughs> I think that's the reason why in 2009, Flylal went bankrupt and Estonia didn't, because Flylal very clearly started fighting with their Baltic and started really going after them, whereas Estonia near established themselves that we're not going with a fight, we're going to go on, on our path, on our, on our journey. And that is why we had for six years longer a national carrier. So I would suggest that, the, I mean, as I said, Air Baltic is a great airline. They have done a lot of good things, and, uh, and I think they have a their good strategy, which they are following. But uh, I'm not necessarily sure that that strategy is the best for the Estonian state. Same, same as uh, we have told to Finnish government very many times that for the uh, Finnish uh, economy as such, the best thing would be to close half of the Finnish airports because they're too close and there are too many of them. Whereas for every single small uh, community there, it doesn't make sense because they would uh, lose jobs in the local airport and they would lose connectivity. So uh, something which might be good on a high end, I mean, on, from the Brussels side and from the European Commission side, I would also say that consolidation is, much, uh, is very good because 10 years ago, 60% of the traffic between North America and Europe was carried by European carriers. Nowadays, 60% is carried by North American carriers and 40% by Europeans. Europeans are getting weaker. So we need to consolidate, we need to make Europeans stronger, but at the same time, th does that support the Estonian economy? No, it doesn't. Okay, Rein Leuk. I say only some remarks that, uh, to my mind, you said uh, statistics is a very powerful instrument, I know, and you said that Estonia belongs uh, by the statistics uh, <coughs> approximately in 130th place uh, if you compare how many seat kilometers uh, people fly from Tallinn. Uh, it's an absolute number, I know. And if you compare how many people live here in Estonia, I know exactly that Estonia is 150th country in the world. And they are very related numbers. And I think so that if, I, I know that if we divide uh, the passenger number to the uh, number of people or inhabitants in the country, Estonia is approximately 35th in the world. It's not a bad result at all, to my mind, because in other, other areas, if Estonia is 30th in the world, we say Estonia is very developed. It's maybe one remark to this one. Statistics is very powerful. It's possible to say everything. But uh, maybe other remarks that I think so, that uh, at how to ensure a new airline's uh, success, that I, I think so, that in the airports, uh, they dream to have the airlines in three segments. And uh, the first one, of course, to have legacy carriers. Uh, the second one, to have based carrier. And the third one, low costs. Uh, now in Tallinn Airport, in, in, in our case, approximately one third, uh, one fourth, uh, approximately 27% belong to the based aircraft market share in the passenger number, approximately 20% to low costs and others, they belong to legacy carriers. And of course, uh, any legacy carriers are interested in working out the net. It, it means to fly to the, to the hubs, hubs for them. And uh, in, in this, this case, I think so that uh, the main key for success for new airlines is they, they must clarify to what segments they belong. Do they start to work together with legacy, aircars, eh, eh, legacy carriers, with, with some legacy carriers? If not, I think so, in this case, uh, to be low cost, it's not possible. It's absolutely not possible. And uh, to be only based aircraft and not to have any agreement with any legacy carriers, I, don't, I, I think that it, it, it's mainly the, maybe the general aviation uh, task. It, it, it means to, to carry only business people to the business destinations. And that how to solve? Of course, the main key is to find partners, to find partners 
It's a, it's a big legacy carrier and to start to fly to the hubs. In this case, yes, of course. But any airport stream, and our, our dream, of course, is to have one third of legacy carriers, one third maybe uh, low, low cost, and one third it's, it's uh, based. It, I will, of course, success to the new carrier. <coughs> yes. Uh, uh, to support the opinion, we speak about the number of people which live in where in Tallinn. Uh, we are taking take to account, for example, Gothenburg, same number of people living there, like in Tallinn, but the number of surf passengers two times more. The question is not only income, but uh, maybe question is uh, uh, related with uh, 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 with uh, structure of economy. We are speaking about uh, economy of uh, higher value. We are speaking about uh, 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 our children which are receiving in PISA test very good results. Uh, about our uh, good uh, tax system in, in our state uh, info technology development, but aviation, good connection of uh, aviation, uh, air transportation is one requirement for growing of this economy of highest values. We speak about the tourists of, uh, 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 which come in with Ryanair, alcohol tourism or conference tourism, which is more profitable. It's different. Yeah. But uh, I, I agree 100% with Rain in, the, in that sense that uh, it should be looked on, uh, on a scale of uh, per population. Uh, however, in the end, uh, in big companies, which we have seen is that uh, if we say that it makes sense to invest in Estonia, they will take the global trade enabling report and they will see, ah, Estonia, 113, 100 and uh, whatever, I ah, will not go there. I mean, this is, this is a reality. I understand the reasoning and it, it's very valid. I, I'm not arguing against that. That, that's the that's the cruelsome of st uh, statistics. It always lies. <laughs> but uh, yeah. All right. Thank you. Uh, I think uh, Jan, if you want to say the yes, final I have a, one more question. What do you think about uh, our academy? What kind of uh, different role the academy has with this new airline than it had with the uh, Estonian Air, should we change something? Should we be more than just a provider of graduates or how we can help? I would say that the, uh, coming from a Lufthansa site, uh, at any time Lufthansa has more than 1,000 interns uh, from different German universities supporting us. And this is uh, free labor, which uh, also helps them to de deliver, uh, de uh, later develop these people. So this is something which uh, for sure, Aviation Academy should try to push for to, to develop further this, uh, this kind of links to provide interns, to provide cooperation, to provide also trainings and also try to uh, seminars like this to also hold them. Once, one thing is seminar, second thing is also a training which is uh, linked on what, what are the other growth opportunities and developments. And I think Aviation Academy as such could be a good platform for creating the aviation, uh, not, the, not a strategy, but uh, vision, where, where to go and what to do, because uh, uh, coming from Tallinn Airport, having worked in, in Estonia, people in the, in the business are extremely busy. I'm not saying that they're not dealing with strategy, but there is not always so much time to, to prepare for workshops and things like that. So to, be prepare, uh, to come to a prepared workshop could be actually one of those, those roles of trying to target what's the, what's the path and then trying to pinpoint this path also through media and other means. Okay, thank you very much. Our discussion time is up and we didn't solve, we didn't uh, discuss <laughs> the third question. I think we could leave this real punch up for our evening reception and everybody can express his or her opinion there. Okay, thank you very much Janus, thank you Alan and special thanks to Sven who is a presenter as well. Uh, please, applause. <laughs> and uh, our next keynote speaker as well is Jan Tam, uh, Estonian Air Navigation Services.
former rector of Estonian Aviation Academy. His experience includes Estonian CAA uh, Acting Director General, uh, Estonian Air Navigation Services CEO, Director General, and also Council Director European ATM okay. Operations. Mm -hmm. uh, so, Jan, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, Sven uh, indicated in his uh, presentation that uh, Estonian aviation infrastructure is uh, the best in Baltics or something like that. Uh, uh, last night it beca became even better. So uh, I'm going to talk to you about the free routing airspace and uh, we did it uh, since uh, 2 o'clock uh, uh, this morning uh, the uh, North uh, European free route airspace is operational. Uh, so, uh, I'm going to explain uh, what uh, happened, how it uh, uh, devo was developed, all this project, and uh, uh, common history, what has happened in uh, Europe uh, and in region, and uh, also I'll introduce your, uh, the, the principles of the free routing airspace, uh, how it's uh, uh, made happen, uh, and uh, what are possible benefits for the uh, airline operators. Uh, free routing airspace, as uh, definition says, uh, users may freely plan a route between the entry and exit point or uh, they have a possibility to route uh, via intermediate point. Uh, no need to refer to the ATS uh, route network, uh, uh, but they have to take care of the restrictions, possible res restrictions. And uh, if this uh, case we have the cross-border multi-state uh, airspace of uh, three or even four nations, uh, uh, then uh, there is a major uh, challenge uh, for air traffic controllers that they uh, have to change their mindset and uh, must be able to clear the aircraft direct into the downstream ACC uh, without uh, coordination. So it's uh, something different what we have uh, in conventional air traffic control so far. Um, where does it come, the free routing concept? Uh, we probably, most of us know that there is a, a European ATM master plan uh, which uh, drafts all the uh, developments uh, in the air traffic management for uh, many years ahead. It's updated every year. There is a part of the en route uh, operations and uh, big, uh, uh, big part of this uh, uh, master plan has enforced by the European Commission implementing regulation uh, since uh, last summer and uh, within the uh, pilot common project uh, of that uh, implementing rule uh, six functionalities of the master plan have to be executed during next, well, up to eight years, which is a common timeline for the pilot common project. And uh, one of those uh, uh, is uh, free routing, flexible airspace management and free routing uh, uh, functionality or uh, operational concept. And uh, in detail, uh, all this is uh, specified uh, uh, in the CESAR Deployment Manager program since uh, September this year. Uh, what are the goals? Uh, maybe uh, such a historical uh, view on things, how the uh, efficiency of the air traffic management uh, has developed that uh, if somebody remembers 2002, then the reduced vertical separation minima uh, was introduced in European airspace, in the most of the Euro European airspace. 
and uh, that was the big step forward to add the flight levels and to uh, in increase the, the capacity of the air traffic management at the uh, most preferred uh, flight levels. Uh, then uh, immediately Eurocontrol started to think about the next uh, steps, uh, what could be taken for improving the situation and they had in mind that the uh, uh, free routing uh, may be the next and uh, introduced uh, somewhere around uh, 2008. Uh, that was uh, not the case. Uh, the, the project or the idea is more, much more complicated uh, to compare to reduced vertical separation minima and, uh, and therefore uh, it uh, took uh, uh, quite much more years. And uh, the first uh, uh, steps made there were the separate states uh, introducing the free routing in their airspaces, sometimes limited time, nighttime uh, free route. Uh, uh, then uh, now more and more it uh, becomes cross border, and, and when we started this project uh, of uh, six states uh, cooperation, uh, now we succeeded uh, today. Uh, implementing the first step of four states, it's still the biggest uh, free route area in the Europe, in the world, and also the, the biggest in, in uh, the, the number of the states involved, four state uh, free routing project. So this is one big s challenge for Eurocontrol as well, to, uh, to build uh, cross-border multi-state free route areas. Also, uh, within this uh, first steps we have realized that the uh, all the management of aeronautical information is big uh, challenge a uh, lot of uh, harmonization is needed uh, to to get proper inter, uh, information to the uh, airlines and uh, of course which is a uh, essential part of free routing airspace this is the uh, airspace management and uh, particularly f flexible use of airspace uh, to support uh, the free route concept. History in Europe. When I said that um, Eurocontrol expected to start uh, whole Europe in 2008 and only uh, small pieces uh, appeared in 2009, uh, then next uh, maybe uh, bigger steps for, uh, forward. I think it was Swedish-Danish uh, cross-border um, uh, free routing area and so on. Uh, the, and the several projects uh, were uh, done for the night time or the limited uh, airspace uh, volumes. Uh, <coughs> by this uh, summer, uh, 32 uh, ACCs out of 64 have somehow introduced and only six of them have a full 24-7 uh, free routing uh, operations available. So um, <coughs> when we started the NEFRA project, it was uh, uh, supposed to happen for six states, Norway, Denmark, Sweden, Finland, uh, Estonia and Latvia uh, actually joining together uh, two flexible uh, uh, two uh, airspace volumes, uh, uh, two FARPs, you know, functional airspace blocks uh, of uh, Swedish, uh, Danish and uh, NEFARP, North European FARP. So, uh, for some uh, technical reasons, it didn't happen, and uh, and uh, today we have insight to introduce the the full NEFRA next summer in 2016, and uh, already we have started uh, the extension uh, of the area even more. It's the Borealis cooperation involving also. Uh, Great Britain and Irish uh, service providers, uh, Iceland, and lately Lithuania and Poland have also expressed their interest to join this cooperation. So uh, if uh, it really happens so, then uh, we start step by step in increasing this uh, free route area, which uh, 
is for the European Commission and according to pilot common project uh, insight for uh, beginning of 2022. So we, ha we are forerunners uh, in this uh, case, uh, uh, but it's it's useful exercise not for us only. Uh, it's also for other European states to to learn from this uh, our first steps. Uh, the <coughs> NEFRA it, uh, itself started in uh, uh, preparatory phase, started in 2012. Then, a uh, year later, it was uh, well enough uh, investigated, uh, the, the opportunities, etc. And the, then the state's uh, declaration was initiated. Uh, uh, actually, I have to emphasize that the, the uh, free route uh, airspace project, it uh, concerns uh, airspace and it's not just the uh, ANSP uh, project, it's a state uh, project where the state has to be uh, make the, the uh, most important decisions regarding all the airspace organization. Uh, well, uh, last year the uh, terms of reference for that kind of the project were, uh, were signed and uh, design phase started where the project plan, operational concept, uh, technical specifications, procedures, etc. well operated. Uh, and uh, at the end of the last year, we already started also in parallel with the design activities, also implementation. So uh, it uh, involved six states, uh, CAAs, ANSPs, many people from technical, operational, information domains. So uh, uh, we consulted with the, the airlines, uh, information was provided uh, during this uh, process. And um, just for the, uh, some uh, technical reasons uh, in spring of this year, it was obvious that uh, still we can't uh, interface all the six participants. And, and uh, finally, the decision was made that the first step of the NEFAP states uh, introduced this uh, FRA first. And the uh, full NEFRA functionalities will be introduced uh, summer 2016. Okay, the organization, the huge uh, project management uh, structure was put into place. Uh, uh, the main working pro body for the, this is not power enough to show, but they're in the uh, red circle. That, that's the, the expert group which started uh, to work with that uh, basic documentation, making basic preparations of the airspace organization, uh, procedures, uh, etc., to prepare the publications. And uh, this uh, expert group was supported by uh, experts, uh, by specialists from every ANSP. Uh, this was, uh, the process was uh, steered on top there by steering committee and finally all the needed steps uh, approved by the CEO committee and the, for uh, this project our uh, Estonian CEO Tanel was uh, chairman of this project. Next step, uh, uh, implementation quite similar, uh, just uh, uh, started in parallel with the, the uh, design phase uh, with the expert group uh, from time to time getting support from, from the experts uh, because of the, uh, for that kind of complicated and uh, multinational project it's, it's quite usual that uh, from time to time you have to make changes. And uh, one big change which happened that we had to split the project uh, in the uh, meantime, it was also done thanks uh, well uh, prepared uh, backup plan and, and uh, uh, well agreed uh, timing. So, uh, and uh, for that kind of project, uh, there are several enablers what we have to 
range uh, in the preparation. It's, uh, now I am talking a bit uh, also uh, from technical point of view what has to be done. Uh, first, uh, we have to agree the airspace. Uh, here we see both of these uh, big parts, uh, Nefa Fra and, and uh, Danish Swedish Fra in, uh, in pink. Um, so uh, uh, that uh, was uh, the first agreement according to the ministerial decision. Uh, later it was split uh, into two parts. Also vertical dimensions to agree. Uh, we know from our eastern neighbor, Russian Federation, no uh, free route. Uh, then Estonian from flight level 95 to 660. Uh, the similar uh, in Finland, except uh, Helsinki terminal area, uh, Swedish, uh, Danish also, they start their free routing uh, higher from flight level to H5. Uh, and uh, Riga has the upper limit a bit lower because of the technical reasons. So it's uh, the first uh, to agree uh, dimensions of the free routing area. Next, this is the airspace management, uh, usual procedure uh, to maximize the uh, utilization of the airspace uh, and, if needed, segregate this between uh, different user groups. Uh, uh, thanks to this project, we had to tackle also one uh, uh, earlier program. It's a flexible use of airspace, which was uh, regulated uh, in the European Union already since 2005, but not was fu fully implemented in Estonia. Thanks to this project and also uh, the fact that Estonia became the Eurocontrol member, and of course thanks to good experts and nice people <laughs> tackling that, uh, we managed to solve this and, and today we may uh, claim that uh, this uh, uh, airspace management supported by the special uh, software, Eurocontrol software, LARA tool. Uh, it's one of the best uh, uh, put in place uh, in region, uh, which uh, assists uh, airspace users and uh, uh, air traffic controllers uh, for uh, operating free route areas. Uh, for these reasons also for uh, uh, for the tactically bookable uh, 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 segregated areas, the uh, special flight plan buffer zones were established and uh, now they are published uh, in IP uh, in en route 5.2. Uh, also, the special points uh, for circumnavigating for the, uh, these uh, areas were established in airspace, so it's also assisting, helping uh, airspace users to plan their routes. Uh, and, uh, and all these areas will be administered by this uh, uh, software, LARA software. Next step, uh, next big uh, enable this is procedures. Uh, we had to set up the special procedures how to manage when the airspace uh, is uh, used by the free planned aircraft airspace users. Uh, this has to take care uh, when uh, special procedures, uh, when the uh, aircraft may, uh, may fly, fly uh, into the third party airspaces uh, because of the tactical rerouting, for example. If this uh, tactical rerouting takes them uh, uh, into the uh, uh, next airspace, how to give them the clearance for that case, and if this uh, um, happens uh, to fly, this uh, tactical rerouting may take the aircraft into the, uh, into the training, uh, active training areas. So for that reason we had to arrange also the, the data exchange between the ACC and, and network manager and also uh, special coordination procedures between uh, NEFRA partners. Uh, for example, uh, special uh, uh, procedure to to, clar uh, to clarify the uh, 
trajectory changes in our airspace must be supported by the data exchange uh, by sending us the AFP messages and re receiving then by the uh, operational units the APL uh, and, uh, and exchange uh, messages. We established the planning rules. This is for operators, how to plan the routes, which are the eligible flights, and uh, how to uh, put the plan. Uh, there are also special uh, arrangements done, for example, not to uh, interfere in the non-fra airspace too early. We had to move our uh, entry point for example entry points for example from the state border a bit further uh, and uh, and in some cases also exit points a bit further of the state border or FIR border technical functionalities if the ATM uh, systems must know large airspace portions if there is need to clear the flight for the next ACC that means that we need to know in our systems all the uh, the airspace uh, significant points and and route uh, information from each participating infra project country which uh, sets additional requirements to technical systems also the uh, uh, system must uh, systems must support uh, the the uh, uh, trajectory updates uh, with the neighbors, the old messaging, and, and also uh, network manager data exchange. So this uh, explains here, for example, the Estonian system or Finnish system. They mo must know this uh, data, airspace data from all uh, NEFRA. It's picture for the NEFRA solution from all NEFRA countries and also from the neighboring Russian Federation. Or there is a, another picture for Danish, where they should know also from UK and from Den uh, uh, Germany and uh, from Maastricht Center also. So uh, this explains that the, the ATM systems must uh, uh, be more capable um, and um, accept more, more information. Uh, changes in the uh, aeronautical information publications. Uh, so far, we had in the instrumental flight rules only integration on the SERA, uh, uh, on the uh, standard uh, European uh, rules of the air. Then uh, now we had to add uh, here the relevant uh, uh, FRA definitions, uh, eligible flights, planning rules, also update the flight planning part en route 110, also uh, updating the maps, tables of the, the significant points, etc. And uh, also in this uh, case, uh, the uh, military exercise and training areas were updated with the uh, coordinates for buffer zones. So, what are the possible benefits the the uh, the, the airline airlines may gain? Of course, it's uh, they, it gives them more flexibility to make the choices on their own, uh, uh, depending on the weather conditions, uh, also depending on the charging, uh, uh, the unit rates in different uh, parts of the the airspace, uh, and. Uh, uh, here I have uh, one uh, explanation from the Lufthansa systems, uh, another Lufthansa company which uh, uh, develops the flight planning uh, software and, and the LIDO packages from there and, and they explained uh, to the ANSPs how to develop the, uh, the um, FRA uh, free route areas so that the uh, airspace users can gain uh, something from that. And uh, we see here that uh, there are several, uh, uh, several issues which may uh, limit uh, the, the, the possible benefits from the free route area. If we uh, have there some uh, 
serious uh, structural limitations or time limitations or flow restrictions, then it's all limits. Uh, additionally, we must consider that the, the, all the, the planning uh, software costs something, uh, uh, training of the people and preparations cost something, and, and if all this is eating of that uh, possible benefit, uh, just the reason why the uh, airlines uh, don't uh, use the free routing. And as we have seen from, uh, from this uh, uh, European experience so far, when the uh, single states have introduced the free routing, then it means that it's not much to gain for the airlines. And, and uh, uh, today, when we introduce um, cross-border, multi-state uh, airspace areas, much larger than previous, then when obviously we, we may see uh, that uh, the gains, pot potential gains for airlines are bigger and they are more extensive users of that. No uh, new operational feature, and even from tonight, uh, I can convince that we didn't expect that there will be more than two flights, but they were. So uh, it, uh, it demonstrates that even uh, for these few hours, we have got uh, uh, quite uh, many um, users more. And for example, Air Baltic, uh, we didn't expect that they are so intensive users of free routing uh, uh, functionality. Here, uh, you probably have noticed how the weather in Europe has changed la uh, last uh, years. That there are, uh, sorry, uh, it's a wind structure that in, in north there are, uh, there are western winds and, and uh, in uh, and south there are more prevailing uh, the eastern uh, winds and uh, for example there is a with blue is a, a fin air flight from helsinki to gfk and usually uh, taking uh, f more from north in this case uh, they picked up the the, the town winds and and used that opportunity so there are real gains and uh, of course when we have discussed also with our operational people then uh, being uh, the first uh, introducing the first that uh, feature that seems that uh, we put there so much effort we invest so much there but but we have to keep in mind that this is just the first step uh, we are in pilot project uh, preparing uh, the environment uh, and the examples and and uh, uh, some experience for next uh, uh, comers there. So, uh, of course, we learned a lot. It's probably uh, wise uh, points for other ANSPs not uh, to talk here, but, uh, but uh, what was maybe uh, one ex uh, experience for that kind of the large uh, multinational uh, project that uh, when we started design phase there was mostly working the expert group and we didn't notice much uh, what is the effort they are putting there and and uh, we didn't uh, we had not uh, real mm, reason to care much about uh, just uh, having uh, regular reporting from there and and not caring much uh, from other operational people point of view but but later when we got into the implementation phase then it became more and more important that the during the everyday work also the operational people from all the departments must uh, contribute to that kind of projects and um, Another uh, good uh, experience from this uh, project was the, that we had the backup plan. And the backup plan stated all the milestones what we do if something goes wrong. And this was extremely useful when we r realized in spring that uh, one country can't uh, update their ATM system so much that to secure the interface between two countries, then it was pretty easy to make the decisions and during a uh, couple of weeks to put another scenario uh, on the table and uh, go on with that. So, And uh, when the <laughs> we started here to discuss uh, uh, is there future for Estonian aviation? Of course there is. We can provide uh, also 
much more than just for flying and just uh, much more than just airlines. Uh, sorry for those people who have suffered now from this crisis, but but there's I, I see so many graduates from academy, not only from from the uh, from the ATC department, but also from other uh, from other specialities of the academy, and they can get jobs and. Uh, interesting challenges uh, in in all the aviation enterprise and uh, as i mentioned that this is a project a bigger project becoming uh, uh, borealis free route there uh, that means that involving its graphics uh, not that good involving iceland irish and and great britain airspace and uh, Possibly also the Lithuania and and Poland are coming into this cooperation. So it's uh, extending, creating bigger and hopefully uh, for 2022 it will be full cross-border environment in uh, European airline, uh, airspace. That's it. Very oh. technical one. Silent. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Jan. Now it's time for. <laughs> it's time for a few short questions. I have one, and uh, the <laughs> one is really technical. So, uh, if now the airplane flight management system has a cost index which depends on the fuel cost versus time cost. Uh, so if in future we have this system widely in use, should there be another index so that the route can be planned, taking into account the navigation costs? Honestly, I don't know about those systems there in the flight management systems, but uh, most probably it will be so, because uh, if they can, of course, it's a long story, uh, short answer, uh, short question, but long answer. Um, uh, I think that the big problem uh, today is that uh, when we established the FARBs, uh, functional airspace blocks, uh, uh, there was idea that we should also uh, have the common unit rate for the one FARB. Today we will have the problem where the, within one FARB we are creating uh, uh, common pros as common uh, free routing area, but there are still different unit rates, uh, which uh, forces airlines to prefer one part of the cooperative airspace to another. That means that uh, most probably those uh, having uh, lower unit rates will earn more, will have more flights, and those which have high unit rates, they lose the flights. And for the uh, success of that cooperation, it's not good. And uh, but we know also that these uh, uh, navigation fees, they are about 6-8% of the cost base of the airline, so it's not that big reason. So I think that uh, they have to make clear it. If there will be tough competition in future, maybe they start prefer also the, the one airspace to other, another. But we see in, already here in, uh, in the region that there are differences and huge differences of three, three times even. For example, between Estonia and Sweden. Finnair prefers to fly thr through Estonian airspace probably than the, instead of flying Sweden. Any more questions? So can we say that uh, November 12 is a breakthrough or a landmark or an EFRA is a gradual process, of course? Yeah, it is. And uh, for example, uh, we, uh, because of us, there was organized special event uh, uh, two days in June this year in Eurocontrol, devoted for the free routing uh, uh, operations and, and discussing as an example of the NEFA project and, and uh, introducing it uh, to others, uh, uh, discussing how, what are the uh, possible solutions in other uh, parts of the uh, Europe. So we, we uh, really feel that uh, it's important project and uh, uh, other, the rest of the Europe is looking on us. <laughs> Thank you. 
Ahmed 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 Uh, the cafe downstairs and all guests here in the lobby please and please be back at 1.35 because 1.40 it's the presentation already 2.35 yeah Lowry says okay